Good evening, my name is Dr. Monty Martin, and welcome to the fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition livestream campaign, and I am your Dungeon Master this evening. Joining me are some of my very good friends. I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the human swashbuckler rogue, and we're joined today by our other good friends. Jill Zanitis, playing Veosenia, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger rogue. And Joe O'Gorman playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome. We are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos every other Tuesday and every Thursday on our YouTube channel, where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for GMs. You could also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You could check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube and check us out as an audio only podcast as well. And we are in the final stretch for our Kickstarter campaign for Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim. If you're watching us right now on Twitch, um, we have four days left in the Kickstarter. And if you are watching this when this goes live on Friday, we're in the final <laughs> maybe 12 hours oh. uh, of, the, of the Kickstarter campaign because it ends on Friday at midnight. So technically it is 12 o'clock a.m. on September 17th, but that is Friday midnight that it ends. So make sure that you mark your calendars. If you thank you to everyone who has shown your support so far by backing the campaign, the Kickstarter, we are getting ready for that final stretch. Hopefully we can blast through these last couple of stretch goals. Uh, and really bring this one on home once again. We are so thrilled by the amazing success that we've seen so far with the Kickstarter campaign. And we hope that if you're still deciding whether or not you want to get on the, uh, get on this project, where you can get new, a whole new class for 5e, all new subclasses for 5th edition, as well as a complete gazetteer to the world of Drakenheim, written by, uh, from the point of view of Sebastian Crow. Check that out on Drakenheim.com. Check out Kickstarter for Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim. It's all, you just got that last window to get in the Kickstarter before it's too late. But with that, let us now dive into that world of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. Welcome back to the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, they were about to roll for initiative. <laughs> um, Do we get surprise? I think, let's, I think uh, we let, talked about it last night. You were the first time do. in in Drakenheim first time in history. Drakenheim history. I've snuck up to the upper balcony. Yeah, and I'm voting that we that we sneak and they don't yeah. know we're there. Okay, so to reset the scene, our heroes are in the midst of the ruins of Castle Draken. They are continuing to hunt for an even greater trophy than Big Linda in their duel with High Paladin Uriel Radley. The challenge, of course, to bring back the greatest or perhaps the largest uh, trophy to show before the High King of Caspia to decide several terms of the peace treaty between them and no most notably the fate of Sebastian Crow. Our heroes have traveled down the stair tower of Castle Draken, which 
towards the an area of the castle at the at the castle's heart. This is the imperial vestibule, which is the point that connects between the ta- the stair tower to the tower apartments, to the conservatory tower, to the chateau, and to the throne room itself of Castle Draken. As they have come down the stairs with Ophelia Reed and Elias Drexel behind them, this opulent hallway covered in artwork with clerestory windows that allow the light from the city to eerily float in and cast across the the marble and tiled floors below. There are several mutated courtiers um, shambling about, their, their strange and otherworldly forms gibbering and babbling in uh, um, almost you can make out as they speak the murmurings of um, someone practicing a speech that they might say before the king. That sort of expen- that expectation of someone saying, yes, your majesty, but I implore you, your majesty, yes, your majesty, but I implore you, your majesty. Other, other, other saying, the, the, the rivers, the rivers, the fields, they won't, the crops. Some of them speaking about the, their, what other pleasantries that they might be overflowing from their lips, others just speaking gibberish, the tattered clothes of the the courtiers bursting out from the mutated forms of the creatures below. One hobbles, its leg grown to monstrous size, another's arms have transformed into tentacles, and another's jaw is distended such that its mouth opens from the the bottom of its nose all the way down to its pelvis for it's the majority of its torso just forming a massive mouth which is murmuring and speaking choking out and ch- and almost choking on its own distorted great tongue which as you see the creature the tongue of this giant mouth is actually composed of the internal organs of the former human melded together inside this this slightly fleshy membrane. <laughs> well, these things have to die. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let's get those initiative rolls then. I got a 19. Okay. I got a 24. So we got Veo at 19. We we got Wilhelm at 24. 21. And 21 for Pluto. Wow. Nice. Okay, let's see. Where do I stand? Wasted my crit on my uh, initiative. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Not wasted. This is a perfect opportunity to give Veo a bunch of... Uh, um, Advantage. Yeah. I go in there. I'm. I, I. I. I like to get my hands dirty. Okay. Well. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> Well, Wilhelm, I will say that uh, you have the benefit of surprise. All right. Um, From my vantage point on the balcony, Mm -hmm. I ready my crossbow and I pop up from over the ledge and fire at uh, the one. Actually, Pluto is going to need... You know what? I'm actually gonna I'm I'm gonna shoot at this one over here. Mm. Okay, you are hidden from these creatures, so you are attacking with advantage, at least on your first attack. Hooray! Um, all right, so here it comes. That's gonna be a twenty. Um, you strike the creature directly in the back with your crossbow shot. Which one were Got you it. shooting again? Um, the furthest one on the bottom, so this guy. Okay. And that's gonna be sneak attack. Whoa, whoa. Um, 
Uh, 29 damage. The crossbow bolt soundly strikes with whatever passes for a heart on the creature, and with a gurgling noise and a bit of a, um, a sound that sounds like a bit of a vomit, it collapses to the ground and begins to slowly collapse into a bit of an amorphous form. It is slain. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take another crossbow shot at the second furthest one. Okay. Do I still get advantage? Uh, yeah, sure. That's going to be another 20. Um, another but- hit as well. This time only for um, 11 damage. The shot uh, um, grievous, uh, the, the shot hits it and it stumbles stumbles forward, um, staggered by the by the shot. this strange liquid that isn't blood and isn't that it, it's too thick to be blood. It more has the consistency of curdled milk, but is a pale yellow color starts oozing from the wound. I am then going to pop back behind the railing and like duck kind of not crawl but like duck duck walk. Okay. Uh, around around this corner over over to here. There's so one that, guy that knows how to duck walk. Yeah. <laughs> Never underestimate. Studied ducks. studied ducks for many years. Okay. Uh, yeah, so now I've changed positions, hopefully throwing them off. Okay. Anything else you'd like to do with your turn? That is it. Okay. Well, um, it is the surprise round, so Pluto and Veo, we're over to you. I want to land on this one. <laughs> That's why I didn't kill the ones closest. I was like, so, Pluto's just going to die. So, <laughs> so, yeah, I want to... Running against the banister as Wilhelm takes a step to the side. I jump after he ducks back down. I jump over his head and I want to leap off the the top of the railing, Mm -hmm. igniting Ignatius mid flight. And uh, I, I, I say in a booming voice, die you abominations. And, um, and I, and I get a, 31 to hit. <laughs> oh, yep. That is a hit. Um, oh, yeah. 30 damage. Uh, you bisect the creature tip to tail. Um, and the two pieces, um, as, as it slides in half, the vestigial uh, forms of its skin almost form small tentacles that try to grab the two halves and pull itself back together, but the cauterization of Ignatius's blow causes it to just fall down. Gross. Reanimate, will you? You, when I kill you, you die. And then I, <laughs> I, uh... when I kill you, you die. <laughs> Quote, Pluto Jackson. <laughs> As I say that. I swing at the next one and I roll a one. So <laughs> I, I imagine I just completely whiff like way over its head. I maybe yeah. I stumbled um on the landing. <laughs> uh Umagish uh does a fifteen hit. Uh a fifteen um with this particular creature, the fifteen does not hit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Pluto, the, the Pluto, what are you doing? Um, the one beside you actually is a little bit slippery, as if its bones have turned into jelly, or maybe it doesn't actually have bones. And with the the whiff, the first whiff shot of Ignatius, you go to reset your balance, but the creature is just swift enough to uh, evade the blow. They're cunning friends. Retreat. Veo, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are over to you. <laughs> I well, wrong tool. I walk over to the edge here, right where Will. So Wilhelm goes around thinking he's, and I just walk to the same spot and start firing arrows. They um, might think that we're the same person. Maybe mind games. 
my arrows are bigger than yours, so um, I'm gonna aim for the already injured one. Okay. Uh, where am I? At? Um. So twenty-one to hit. That is a hit. Yes, the arrow strikes true into its novelty flesh. Novelty. Twenty-two damage. The with the second arrow shot, the strange pus that was leaking out of it explodes almost like a broken cyst, and whatever acid that composed its blood begins uh, dissolving the body of the creature as it falls to the ground. Wait, we need a trophy. <laughs> Stop dissolving! We need to collect you for the contest. <laughs> Start picking it up. <laughs> I've already written down six castle courtiers. Um, my second shot, I'm going to take a cross at the one on the stairs. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is 20 to hit. That is a hit indeed. And... There we go. 22 damage. Um, as the creature begins to... Um, it... It's just getting out of the surprise as it begins to like throw itself over the banister towards Paluto, but your shot gets it in midair and it collapses on the uh, on the ground with a very wet squish noise. <laughs> and then I get because uh, it's my first turn, I get one more weapon attack and I'll go for the one that's uh, based with Pluto. Okay, uh, the slippery one. The slippery one. Uh, 23 to hit. As it as it dodges Paluto's previous blow, your arrow finds uh, its target. Um, it overextends itself and basically catches the arrow right, right in whatever passes for its torso. Because Pluto's base, I get sneak attack, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that, oh, uh, 33 damage. Oh, okay. It is shot down. Correct. I'm done. Anything else fail? Okay. And with that, we go to the top of the round with Wilhelm. I really want to shoot a chandelier and have it fall on this creature. Is it? Is it like I know it's not under the chandelier, but how not under the chandelier? Oh, is that it? chandelier is is massive, and uh, you actually remember the the chandelier that hangs in the middle of of, of this hallway is filigreed with gold and is forms several pieces of um, rare uh, crystalline um, glass, and there might even be diamonds in it. Um, the you can recall um no, I don't you, want to shoot. you can recall <laughs> actually you, as you look at the chandelier you recall your father muttering something along the lines damn fool spent nearly a hundred thousand gold pieces on that blasted chandelier <laughs> i i see the creature walking under the chandelier i hold my crossbow up to shoot the rope think of my father talking about how much it cost and uh then think about how i have to come back to this castle to be crowned and all of that and i just aim my crossbow back down at the creature and shoot <laughs> at it um we're no longer in surprise though no. so i don't have advantage um no because you didn't hide on your last round on your last turn no i didn't uh all right well then you could unless you use cutting aim i will use yeah one of those it's not cut, steady easy. aim steady aim yeah sorry right. cut, cutting aim steady aim i forget these names cutting action steady aim. that's gonna be a 28 to cutting hit aim. it is a hit and now i get to roll all the dice instead of just a die there we go Uh, 27. Okay. Um, the shot slays the creature. Oh. 
And then I do a little handstand flip down next to Pluto, because that's what I do. I land and brush myself off and say, collect some trophies, shall we? But they're all goop. Collect some goop trophies, I, I have suppose. to be honest. Don't uh, touch the goop. King, yes. Uh, uh, it, it, last time I played with goop, <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, it is a black spot on both mine and other families. So No, Stead is the black spot. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, I don't think it's good that we cl- let's just stay away from the goop. We don't need goop. I'm I, sorry. We came to the castle to collect trophies from monsters that we kill, and so far we have said no to one monster, and now we're saying no to collecting trophies from the ones we killed. I'm saying that. What else is left of them? Is there anything other than goop? Um, as the two of you converse, um. <laughs> You hear the faint sound of piping emanating down the halls. A almost as if someone is playing perhaps a clarinet or a flute, but in slightly unsettling and tones that that make your spine sort of tingle and you hear in your mind Wilhelm the words it's coming whispered the words it's coming as a whisper but the whisper with each syllable is spoken by a markedly different voice And only Wilhelm hears this? Wilhelm hears it. Uh, hears the words that's coming, but you can all hear the piping. Uh, worth noting, we are still in initiative order, though. Um, would you like to do anything else with the rest of your turn, Wilhelm? Elias, are you playing the flute? <laughs> victory flute. Is that the victory flute? Pluto, it think- is your turn. We brought the victory flute. Um, Can I tell which direction, sort of in this four, you know, generally speaking, north, south, east, west, which? Yeah, if you'd like to use an action to make it to uh, really focus for a moment, uh, I can let you make a perception check. Does it help that my passive perception is 22? Um, no, would in this help? case, you would need to really, you need to spend the action. Really, yeah. I really want to use, <laughs> I have, oh, I get advantage. I turned a nine into a 14. Okay. The whispering is not coming from this direction. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not, uh, which would be the west. It So it's not high enough to zero out which way it is coming from, but it is definitely not that way. Then I'm going to spend my movement to sort of block this, this way, almost like a, an anticipation, but then also continue to listen and try to decipher it. I'm going to end my turn up okay. on the north side to see if it's as you um, as you walk in that direction, which is towards the throne room, you are now passing through the lower. So above you, there's two parts to the throne room, right mm. uh, to the antechamber to the antechamber. So this antechamber has a staircase that goes up to a balcony level that then leads to the balconies that wrap around the throne room. So yep. you are currently moving down the entrance that leads into the lower level of the of the of the throne room proper, and okay. as you do, um, you can see into the the throne room, a place that you have not been uh, since your last great battle there. Now, currently in the throne room is the now festering, um, well, not festering, the turgid remains of the horrific creature that you slew 
in your battle against uh, uh, um, the amalgamation, but also the ruins of countless ratlings that have been destroyed in, in the battles that were, were fought here. Um, they're now in their, in their place. You recall that the great stained glass windows of the throne room of Dra of Castle Draken had been peering out into alien vistas. And now these windows um, are still, but yet there is something wrong about the glass. The light reflects strangely through them, and what you see through the stained glass is not so much the outside looking at looking out into the the world, but almost like a funhouse mirror version of the the world beyond, seen through the strangely colored glass of the of the windows themselves. The great throne of Castle Dra of Castle Draken sits before you still covered in the refuse of the of the amalgamation the horrific mounds of cancerous flesh still pulsing uh in the room room itself great pools of delirium sludge and large delirium crystals still bursting through through the floor for none have come to clean or claim this great throne room undulating around the throne are three bizarre floating lumps of flesh. They move almost like, like a bundle of eels or snakes that have been tied together around a ball. Um, the long tendrils um, whisking themselves through the air around where that rift was above the throne and the three creatures with their spherical bodies of strange alien flesh and the long tendrils around them each have in their um hold in their in the tendrils hands what appears to be a clarinet but this clarinet is made of sinew, bone, and some sort of strange alien metal. The, th the creatures hold the clarinets to their bulbous bodies, but where there is a mouth or orifice that they pipe from, who knows? The strange tendrils play along the clarinets, and as they do so, you can sense that there is a connection between the strange music they play and the rift, as if these creatures are trying, through their song, to pry it open. There's a band over here, <laughs> and I think it might be their last call. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah. yeah. I, I applaud that. <laughs> Bayo, Wilhelm, it's hauntingly eerie over here. Oh, it's these they, guys again. But it looks like they're doing something to I'm, the rift. I, uh, I thought Wrath closed this rift in the dreamland. The, these things were trying to come through, and we... Uh, yes, the piping. You've encountered these before? Uh, something similar was coming through the rift in the dreamland version of the throne room when we were there. and uh, But we sealed that rift, and I... I I thought it was done. I thought we were done with that, but well, um, oh, we're done with that. And blue. I'm going to use, um, let me see here. I'm going to use 
Uh, my... Where is it? Maneuvers. Give me, give me all the maneuvers. Everything's in different places. Quick toss. Okay. So I'm going to use a bonus action. Okay. Um, and I'm going to, as part of that action, I can draw and make a weapon, ranged weapon attack. Okay. The throne property. So I throw the javelin of lightning um, at the awful creature. Okay. That's closest to me. The closest one? All right. Um, I get a... Because I think I'm on disadvantage. Uh, I get a 17. That does strike true. It, it slams into the bulbous body of the beast. Um, and so I'm going to... Okay, so it's going to take 18 points of damage. Okay. And I'm going to try this. Uh, um, it needs to make a strength saving throw. Okay. Against uh, DC 18. Uh, it gets a 7. <laughs> So it drops the flute. <laughs> okay. The flute is part of its body. <laughs> so it cannot drop the flute. Okay. Um, but, but it can still take the damage? Yep. Yep. Okay. Then I... Um, it takes an additional um, four damage. Okay. The creature, as the javelin of lightning crashes into it, there is a it plays a sharp note and there is a snap in your vision and you feel the psychic resonance of the javelin striking your own body and you take 22 psychic damage <laughs> as the pain is reflected back upon you ow There goes my temp HP. Mm. Okay. Anything else, Pluto? No, that's it. Okay. The creature turns towards you, yep. writhing in its pain, and it plays a note that almost sounds like a twisted version of the trumpet's call that musters soldiers to a doomed march. Pluto, I need you to make um, a charisma saving throw. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Um. <sighs> minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Okay. First, <laughs> I'm assuming I failed with a ten, so I'm going to use indomitable. Okay. Okay, so a one definitely fails. <laughs> okay. You take And so last thing I want to do is I want to use a luck point. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Come on. Can he can he do it? Can he um, do it? Roll this is, number. This... <sighs> Jupiter. You're listening. Oh, his body's in there. <laughs> 18. You didn't take 18. it. 18. Uh, that is a success. Me. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Um, <laughs> Jupiter, thank you. <laughs> with that... Use all my stuff. Um, it... Um, so, um, you do not take any damage uh, in that case, but the creature does fire Eldritch Beams at you, um, getting a 20 and a 9 to hit. Um, the 20 hits. Okay, uh, that is going to be 14 points of force damage. Ah. Now, the one beside it, it is also going to play this... Uh, oh, and then finally, uh -oh. this creature is going to teleport up onto the balcony. 
<laughs> so it is now on the balcony level, not the ground level. Um, the other cool. one is going to move towards you, Pluto. And it is also going to play that strange calling note. Another charisma saving throw from you, please. Okay, real quick. Just going to take a quick look. Um. I just love that, like, Pluto hasn't even, like, left. Like, I can't see into the throne room, but I just see you walk into a hallway, and all of a sudden you're just like, ah! Like, I mean, the only like, way... Like, flashing lights. I it's can like poltergeist. This. I'd have to indomitable again. I got a one. I, I can indomitable again. And, like, I, I just... I don't know. I think I just have to take it. Okay. You take ten psychic damage. Uh-oh. And the creature teleports you into the delirium sludge. No! <laughs> And then you're just gone. And I'm watching you, flashing lights, you're screaming, and then you're gone. How does the teleport work? Does like, it just get sucked it, it, into it's nothing? It's like, uh, it, it's almost like you, it looks like you implode. So like, Pluto? There, there's, there's a cloud of like, almost waving eldritch dust that envelops you around a point with like this sucking sound, like, and then you appear in the delirium sludge. With, with another almost immediately as if you were pulled through space. Um, so I need a constitution saving throw for falling into delirium sludge. I don't I see you. I'm like... <laughs> I get a 20. You do succeed. Uh, um, so you do not gain a level of contamination, but you do take 10 points of necrotic damage. Oh my gosh. Um, and then the other creature is going to fire two more uh, beams at you. Um, yeah. Both of them... Re- deflect off of your armor and then it's going to teleport out onto the balcony and Monsters. then the last creature you're in a nice place for it so it's going to try to scramble your brains <laughs> give me an intelligence saving throw <laughs> i don't know <laughs> and this is all based on the sounds that are coming out of them correct yes yes it plays an insane um it, it plays an insanely incomprehensible series of notes on its clarinet that no mortal clarinet player could ever fathom, and it causes your ears to start bleeding. And I took clarinet uh, when I was in public school, um, <laughs> and that's why I know how bad it is. Uh, it, <laughs> just a little little canon for the audience. Uh, real quick, what was the saving throw? Um, I need an intelligent saving throw. Oh, I'm uh, better than charisma. Important question, though, Joe. Did Joe take clarinet or did Pluto Jackson Pluto, take clarinet? Pluto okay, Jackson. Okay, okay thank you. Um, would, and would and it... you are not concentrating on a spell currently, are you? Oh, no. Okay. Um, 13. Will 13 get me there? Uh, 13 will get you there, actually. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Oh, God. So you only take five points of psychic damage uh, and don't have your brain scrambled. Really needed that. Yeah, really need that. Um, it's going to fire two Eldritch Beams at you, uh, one of which crits. Um, it can't be crit. Uh, you can't be crit. Uh, so the crit <laughs> does hit you for 14 force damage. Thank you, Sebastian. And Crow's then dad. it envelops itself and teleports onto the balcony. Hey! Hey! Uh, so that's pork their chops. turn. Uh, pork Veo, it is your turn. You hear P- Pluto screaming pork chops in the throne room. <sighs> okay. Um... Pluto, I don't know if I can help you this turn, but Wilhelm, I have an idea to maybe save us, okay? I'm going to feline agility down as far as I can go. Now, just remember, Veo, um, that where you are, um, it's not clear from this map, but there is a landing um, that is right up here, and you can actually go up the stairs and onto the balcony. Which, yeah. Yeah. So I was going to yell, like, as an archer, you would probably... Yeah go to the vantage point. Yeah, I But just, I also don't want to meta just, game and just, be like Just unfortunately, it, it's, I've it's got hard an idea. to represent multiple levels in roll 20 or at least and I don't know. So I can I'm going to use my bonus. Okay. I'm going to use my bonus action to um cunning action to dash. Okay. And I'm going to use my feline agility because okay. I just want to I want to get down there for now. Okay. Okay. So actually, how many? That is doubled than doubled. So it's 120 feet I can get. I guess. Okay. Uh, zip. Um, zip. It, 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 it's zip. yeah, yeah. Zip. Okay. Uh, can I get to? Pl- I think I can get to Pluto. Okay. Yep. 
Will actually, you know what? Will have follow us in. You're gonna need to follow us in. I'm gonna get to here, and I am going to cast silence on us. Okay. Because it deafens anyone within that area. And I figure if we can hear the clarinets, they can't hurt us. Interesting. Can't. Interesting. Okay. Is it a is it a static area? Because it's uh, a set area. Can you created with you cast in or object? pass through a twenty foot radius sphere centered on a point you choose with any range. Interesting the- play. So technically, okay. So I'm I'm gonna say. Technically, these monsters, as written, you don't have to hear their song in order to be affected by their abilities. Oh, okay. But that's a that is so smart and so clever. I I think it. I think I've got to allow yeah. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I cast silence where we are. So there's this twenty foot sphere of, and as soon as it happens, I'm like talking to Pluto, and you can't hear anything. I'm <laughs> it's like, affecting me more. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, that's what nice. I do. So, and yeah. then I turn to Wilhelm and I'm like gesturing you to come over here. I'm like still like press against mm. the wall. Like, oh, I have to go in. I have to go in. These no, are the, um, these are some of the mo- new monsters in the book. I think th- this was such a clever play. I'm going to add that the creature must be able to hear to the what? description of the, because that's such a smart that's such a smart way of getting around the monster's power. It feels I, so I right. I agree, because yeah. they're piping, right? Yeah, like they exa- are piping. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Woo! And they can't even drop their flutes. Like, come on. Yeah, and they, they can't even drop, drop their flutes. Drop your flute. Yeah. <laughs> or or <laughs> silence. Yeah. Yeah. That really smart play. Really smart play. Okay. So, um, anything else, Vale? That is, that is it. All right. Vale, have you ever felt that feeling when a small animal brushes up against the back of your leg and you didn't know they were there? Yeah. And it scares you? Like you just feel like, oh! That that feeling? You feel that feeling. When the cats run into a cucumber? Or, or, you know (laughs) that, or more accurately, you know the feeling when you have you ever swam in a lake and you're swimming in the lake and something brushed this. by your feet i it's like my the least seaweed. favorite thing in the world <laughs> the seaweed you feel that feeling yeah just like seaweed just brushing against your limbs under the water and then it's gone and you see me go but no sound comes out. <laughs> I'm in silence. Yeah. Oh, that's um, with that, um, all my drags are dead for now. So, Wilhelm, it is your turn. For now? Um, Wilhelm, press up against the wall, not wanting to look into this room because it's all scary and there's a light show going on in there and I can't hear my friends anymore. It's gone completely quiet, except for the piping. Um, Wilhelm yells out, Rule number 89, do not fear failure, fear not trying. And then mumbles to himself, why does it always have to be Eldritch Horrors? And um, I'm going to bonus action dash. And I come screaming into the room. Ah! And as I enter the area of silence, it just goes into... <laughs> and I stop... And I'm, I'm, can I see any of these creatures? Yes, you can see their undulating and insane forms up on the balconies above. Okay. Um, I'm going to just uh, fire my crossbow at uh, this one over here. Okay. Uh, by the way, I bonus action. I use my cunning action to dash there. Okay. So no um, advantage. No advantage. What's the one I attack? Yeah, that one. I attack that one. Uh, so that's going to be um, 15 to hit. Uh, that is a miss. I was running and screaming and yeah, confused. Yeah, so. that's just not... Yeah, sorry. Okay. Pluto, it is your turn. You're starting your turn in Delirium Sludge. Con save, my friend. 
and and, and the beginning and the end. Yep, enter and yeah. whenever a creature enters or starts their turn in the slice. Hang out. I just want contamination. Oh yeah, twenty seven. Okay, oh. so it's only ten necrotic damage and no contamination levels. Ow. Okay. Um. So, Vea, what's the radius on silence? 20 feet. Okay. Um, that hurt. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to first climb out of the delirium sludge. Yeah. Probably for there. the best. There you go. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, what did I... I made this stupid square... Let's just get rid of it. Is that how big it is? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's way bigger. Yeah, and that, um, that will follow you too, Jill, as long as it's in effect. Really? And then yeah. looking right. over at this at the same creature. I'm gonna get right near Wilhelm. And I'm gonna start throwing spears. Um Oh, can uh, we be back to back? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's fine. That's totally fine. Yeah. Um does a 15 hit? It does not. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, a crit. Do, okay, <laughs> then a crit will do, do the job. Which one were you attacking? The one that you'd attacked the, before? Yeah, this one. Uh, okay. And so throwing my spear, it, it penetrates into the pillar beside it. I recall it. And I throw it once more, um, getting a... Uh, 18 damage. Okay, that does not slay it, though. Come on. Um, it is wounded. Um, it, and I, I will say it can't use its reaction to reflect playing on you because it requires it to play. So it tries, it plays, but you can't hear it, so you automatically succeed on your save. Keep your demon song away from me! Nice. And then nobody can hear you. Twenty-seven to hit. That's a hit, and that will slay it. As your final javelin shot strikes it in the in the body, what happens is there's a flare and a flash, and imagine the sparks running down a fuse. That's what happened to all of the tendrils of its body, but outward from the core of its body. So there's kind of this this spherical lump and then all of the tendrils and there's there's dozens of them, they all light up like fuses and burn away causing the lump of flesh to turn into like a stone that drops on the ground and shatters and then this weird clarinet of flesh and bone clatters on the ground. And then I turn to Wilhelm and I push him in the chest. And just, I, just to get your attention. Oh, not, not like a focus. Because kind of... I, I'm assuming you didn't see me kill this thing. And I, I point over at it and I give one of like one of these. And then I point back over the other two. Step, step. And I grab you and you can hear, you can see my mouth say rule number something. And I start something, and I've already tuned out. Like I've yeah. already tuned out. Like I'm, I'm already looking at Veo. <sighs> well, the creatures, uh, the, the creatures bob forward in the air, oh. flying above you. I hate it when they bob. As they, as they bob, um, the weave. They bob and they weave, um, and they will. Um, They did. They are smart enough to know that Veo has cast a spell, but not smart enough to know um, what's going on. But but what they will do is they will fire their eldritch beams still at you, uh, and one will target Veo and another will target Pluto. So Veo, two shots against you. I get a twenty-one and a fourteen to hit. Uh. Because I cast silence, can I use my shield ring as a reaction? Uh, you know what? You might not be able to, um, because shield might. It's a concentrate. It might be verbal. It might be verbal. Oh yeah, true. Okay. Yeah. Um. So one of them hits. Let's let's just make sure here. I've got yeah verbal. 
Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you, you, the spell would fail in silence. Yep. Okay. Um, so I have to roll a concentration check. Yeah, 14 damage, and I need a con- concentration check. You can do this, Vero. 17? Uh, yep, silence stays going. And Pluto, okay. two shots against you. Uh, oh. That's a natural one and a two. Um, so goodness. the creatures... Oh, how much damage did I take? 14, 14. force. 14 force damage. Um, they oh, are visibly playing their strange clarinets, <laughs> and they were definitely targeting you all with some sort of abil- an ability that would have been an AoE, but you can't hear it. <laughs> yeah. Should we just go out and listen? Just to help them. Out. Okay, fine. Yeah, right? Like, you can see the sonic waves of psychic disturbance that clearly would be some sort of song that would scramble your mind and make your ears bleed and maybe drive you insane, but you can't hear it. (laughs) My normal genre of music is what you're saying. Thank you, (laughs) Vale. Okay. And with that, um, they will, um, the undulating creatures will teleport back up onto the belt. Okay. Veo, it's your turn. All right. I am going to aim some shots. Uh, I'm going to go for the one right now that's furthest away. Okay. Let's see. Uh, 22 to hit. That does hit. That is for 20 damage. Okay. The shot strikes its body, um, leaving it bloodied. And then one more shot. Uh, 17 to hit. Also a hit. Ooh. Nice. And that is for 24 damage. So as it teleports back towards the balcony, you almost anticipate where it's going to go. And the two arrows strike it just as it rematerializes. And it it and it dies only partially rematerialized, sending its uh, again its stone body to the ground and leaving behind the clattering car- clarinet, which you actually can't hear, but it's destroyed. I, I'm like looking at you, Vale, I'm like <laughs> We're, we're like all I po- cheering. I point to you and I point to the next one and I say, Yeah. <laughs> you. And finally, um, we go to the top of the round with Wilhelm. And I turn to Veo and I smile and I go, and, I, <laughs> and you think you see rule 57 and I say some stuff with like a very confident face and then I nod and turn with my crossbow and I'm going to use steady aim. I imagine it's hard to lip read Wilhelm because of his mustache. Like a lot of the time you really. No, it's because of the eye tell. patch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I get a 19. A hit. All right. And I used uh uh, steady aim, so I'm gonna get sneak attack. Come on. Ooh, I like that. That's gonna be 32 damage. Um, the shot rings true, and the lights burst out as it uh, collapses. And I twirl my crossbow, put it back in my belt, and I turn to you, and one more time I just start saying stuff, but you you have no idea. Mm. <laughs> as, um, as the room stays quiet under the silence effect, you see that the amongst the remains of the amalgamation of flesh and delirium sludge, just at the base of the great throne of Castle Draken, is the crown of Westamar, covered in sludge and gunk, and perhaps the skull fragments of Ulrich von Kessel? Um, But it 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 rests there. I'm going to begin this slow approach to the throne. I'm going to remove the silence spell. 
Okay. Pluto. Sh sh should I? Don't touch the sludge. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, we use them. I'll use gloves. Also, uh, where are our witnesses? Did they witness that <laughs> combat? Like, does that count? Um, they have held back, but they did. They've now come forward, um, and they they step into the in into the room. Uh, Ophelia and uh, Elias. Uh, Ophelia Reed shakes her head, and Elias Drexel nods as well. Ugh. Back here again. Well done. Those things didn't seem like too much of a threat, though. Well, I mean, that's nice of you to say, but how often are we fighting uh, tentacled monsters? I guess, you know, at this point, uh, often enough is the answer. Often I mean, enough. It, it, was, it was due to Veo's quick thinking. I My mind is in disarray. <laughs> And I'm yeah. covered in sludge. Got a bit scrambled, but I wanted to make sure we were, you know, got out of this in one piece. Um, those were the strangest monsters. I've, I mean, maybe not the strangest. I've seen some pretty strange monsters. But they were among some of the strangest monsters I've seen in here. And I wonder what oh. they were doing with the portal. Can can we collect a trophy from them? I mean, uh, I know that they weren't the yeah. Collect the flutes. I'm gonna go around and get the flutes. Okay. Um. The flutes are very bizarre. Even touching them, um, they they feel porous and silky to the touch. They're slightly warm as well. As you pick up one of the flutes, you feel... Well, you feel strange. Make a wisdom saving throw. Uh -oh. 13. You think it might be fun to play this flute. In fact, yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Playing the flute might be a really good idea. No. Guys, listen, I've never taken music lessons before, but I feel very confident, and I go to play. Can I? Can you, I see you? Where is Veo? Is she up on the balcony? Yeah, she she would she would be up on the balcony Good if she's pick, picking one of these up. Climb the pillar. Just. Yeah, climb the um, pillar, and as you as you see her, she's standing on the balcony. She and it um and she picks up the flute, the 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 clarinet, more accurately, um and. As she raises the um, the clarinet to, I guess she's a tabaxi, so she doesn't have lips. Does cats have lips? Do you call it lips? Have little lips. Yeah. Very little. Um, <laughs> as you you raise the clarinet to your little mouth lips. and begin playing with a proficiency for a clarinet that Veo does not possess. The best married little lamb you've ever heard. Yep. Um. <laughs> So, Veo, until you are able to escape from this effect, you will use your turn to continue every your action every turn to continue to play the clarinet. Veo's uh, really good. Can can I? I have I have my boots on. Can I run up one of the pillars and mm -hmm. like? I'm going to with my sword knock it out of her hand. You're going to try to knock the clarinet out of her hand. Why? Yeah. She's just playing the <laughs> Okay. All right. Um like you're going to throw the weapon? No, like I'm I'm going to dash Okay. up the pillar. You'll have to kill me first. Okay. Um I hate Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> Use your sworn enemy. I just play it more aggressively. All right. So so Wilhelm, um what I will have you, have you do? is um there's there's if you're gonna try to knock the 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 clarinet out of veo's hands i will have the two of you make an opposed grapple check in this case so you can make you, you can basically roll acro whatever your highest of acrobatics and athletics are against each other oh it's on <laughs> the ultimate showdown all right oh, acrobatics 
Also acrobatics. Oh, I didn't roll very well, so. 15. <laughs> 15. Veo, please. Is that total? Yeah, I have a plus 10 and I rolled a 5, so. All right, well, I rolled a 16 and I have a plus 13, okay. so. As you I go to sway out of the way. <laughs> Wilhelm, as you go to... to you spin. Um, Veo's grip on the flute is quite good. Um, so you have, uh, um, so as you go to knock the, the, the flute out of, out of her hands, you have a choice now to make. Mm. If you are willing to grab the flute with your hand, you will rip it out of her grip. If you are not willing to do that, though, um, it's going to take another successful check to, to, to get it out of her hands. Another successful acrobatics check? Um, well, in this case, I'm going to have you roll opposed strength checks against each other. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm... I have a negative one strength, so... Oh, do you? Oh, wait, so do I. Um, you know, I know what? I'm like, we're literally the same. I'm going to use my hand. Her grip... Okay. On the flute may be strong, but my grip on reality is stronger. As you place your hand on the flute, give me a wisdom saving throw. Of I course. Hiss at you. See, I have a few luck points to spare right now, so. How's a 17? Uh, a 17, you manage to withstand the pull of, of the flute. Um, and. You uh, and so you're gonna re you you manage to rip it out of your hand. by putting your hand on the flute. You're able to use enough of your own acrobatic leverage that it doesn't matter what the strength is. You just pull it and you and you are you are now holding the flute. But even as you pull it out of her grip, Veo, you have not escaped from the gl the clutches of whatever magic compelled you to play this flute. So. It is your turn. Give me a wisdom saving throw. Roll the one plus a two, so a three. I okay. love this freaking clarinet of my so whole life. So now you need to use, it's, it's up to you, but I, you need to get that flute back using every possible way that you can get get it back. <laughs> I, want I, I, I don't, I I don't want to make this more dramatic, but I am standing at the edge of a balcony, just to let you know. <laughs> really? I'm just just throwing that out there. That, that's uh, where I am. Have you ever like dangled a treat by a cat on the top of the couch and they go to jump for it and they leap over the couch and fall on the other side? Uh, mean stuff to do. Well, to cats. why are you bullying Veo? She's just trying to. I didn't even know she had that skill. Why are you taking the the clarinet from her? Um, <laughs> she just wants to play the clarinet. <laughs> You have a crown. You can have a crown. You know, these clarinets are opening a rift into another reality. Look, we don't it's kind want... of gross that she didn't clean it before she put it in her mouth. But other than that, I don't see any problem. Yeah, with Pluto's now distracting me <laughs> and waving the clarinet around. Yeah, I'm going to give Veo advantage on however she tries to get it back because of that. Um, <laughs> I definitely want to. Um, hold on. Uh... Do, like, do do whatever you want. Like, if you're gonna if you're gonna hurt Wilhelm, just do it. Commit. Yeah. Commit just, to what you're gonna do. I'm going to Let's let her have the flute back, man. I'm gonna definitely um I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. Okay. As, so I'm just gonna go at him. Like yeah. Okay. You um, you leap at like him to grab it. Pounce? Yeah, I'm gonna like cat Fuck. like <laughs> Okay, yeah. so if you're just gonna try to grab it back in the most direct way way, way possible, um, I'm gonna have you both make opposed acrobatics checks again to grab it back. Or oh, I guess or, I can. What would you do? I was thinking my mage hand is invisible. Like, can I knock it? Mage hand out of is hand? probably not strong enough to mage hand to can't, knock it. Mage hand can't attack. So no. it, it so because mage hand can't attack, I rule that it can't grapple. It, so like a mage hand can't grab something out of someone else's grip. 
Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to go. I'm just looking at all my magic. I'm like, I'm going to go. I'm just going to go for it. Okay. Yeah. Oppo- uh, give me opposed acrobatics checks once again. 26. Ooh. Uh, that's going to be. 31. <laughs> Okay. As she pounces, I'm going to duck. Okay. Vale, give me a dexterity saving throw to not go over the edge of the balcony. (laughs) Uh, Oh, uh, 30. (laughs) Okay, so you leap over Wilhelm, and as he ducks, you grab the banister of the balcony and swing yourself back around on top onto Wilhelm's shoulders. And so the two of you are... St- <laughs> I'm trying to grab it from you on your shoulder. <laughs> Just like up. Uh, hey! Hey! <laughs> knock it off, you two! Polito, what are you going to do? Around here. What are you going to do, Polito? Um, I'm going to... I'm going to embarrassingly have to yell at them from below while they fight on the catwalk. Because I, I can't... I don't fathom that this is like a cursed flute. Like I just saw, well, you know, as far as I know, Veo picked up a flute and started playing it. And then Wilhelm ran up and tried to take it from her. I don't, I don't know if I'm clocking that it's like inherently evil. Okay. She just wanted to play some music. So <laughs> I think they're just messing around and I'm like, guys, guys, focus. Hey, 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 get the crown. We got delirium sludge here. Stop playing around. We got to go. The judges, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ophelia. I'm sorry I'm was- we're wasting your time. Ophelia says, Ludo, I think something's wrong with Veo. Yeah, I know. There's, It's been like this since day one. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's been a lot of, there's like this, there's this, she's food focused, okay? She'll do anything for food. Now she has this fixation with like a, 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 a clarinet. I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on. He makes delicious sounds. <laughs> Give it to me. No. <laughs> Let go! It's not good for you. Okay, I'll start making my way Get up out of your mouth. What's the, what, what what's what's you the quickest way up there? Um, you could climb up the the pillars, or you could um, go back <laughs> out into the vestibule and back up the stairs and around again. I'm gonna come up there. I'm okay. coming up there. <laughs> don't make don't there. make me come up there. I'm, I'm coming up there, and I'm gonna start making okay. my way up. Okay, I'll spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even, even if she's trying to whistle it back, like like you could, e- even in the act of trying to get the clarinet back, like you just want to hear the music again. Um, so Wilhelm, what are you gonna do? Um, I'm going to, with one hand still wrestling with the uh, the the clarinet, I reach into my bag and I pull out a ration of fish. And I throw it. <laughs> the ultimate. Okay. The Seeing the sight of the fish, Veo, you feel your life's great passion flash before you, literally. And I will, um, um, I will allow you to make an immediate wisdom saving throw with advantage. Yes. They still fail me now. Ooh. <laughs> I rolled a one and a nineteen. So Okay. Uh plus two. So twenty one. The, the sight of food snaps Veo back to sanity. <laughs> Immediately pounce off of you yeah. and go for the food. Bounding off of Wilhelm and going for, for the food. And speaking of food, <laughs> seems like a good place to take our break. We'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> oh man. And we are back from our short rest. We have restocked our consumables and I'm going to play some more D&D. So as the accursed clarinet, Wil- Wilhelm, I can only assume that you throw it to the ground or what, what are you going to do with it? It's still in your hand. I mean, it's the trophy from our kill. I wrap it up in a cloth and I gather the other two using the same cloth without touching them and I wrap them up and put them in my bag. Okay, that's a lot of assumptions packed into a single sentence. (laughs) It's only when I touch them, right? 
He says confidently. He <laughs> says very, very confidently. Um, as you hold the clarinet wrapped in cloth in your hands, looking upon it like a gift, you could unwrap this gift. It could be yours. Give me a wisdom saving throw. I already passed my wisdom saving throw, sir. Oh, you did. Right. Correct. You did. Okay. You still feel that pull, though. Like, oh, wow. I didn't like, know like, that was like, going to work. Like, like um, <laughs> yes, you, you pass your wisdom saving throw against the... So what, what I'll t- tell you is, like, you've passed your saving throw against this clarinet. Um, but the magic of the other clarinets has you'll I'll give you advantage on your saving throw if you want to pick up the other ones. You know, I'm I'm second guessing this this course of action now knowing that it's still powerful. Like it, the power doesn't seem to be fading, does it? No. Um it's it's not about if if anything, it's not about the magic of touching the object, it's the magic the the fact that you're holding the object. Like the okay. like that it's a, that it's a psychic sort of pull rather than one of mere physical contact. I I as Veo's chowing down on her fish, I I also do throw out rule number eighty five: the quickest way to gain favor is with full stomachs. Um, and I toss the flute aside, and I'm going to go back. No Veo, and I'm enjoy your fish. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go back to the creature's corpse. Does it have, like... As I approach the creature's corpse, does it also draw me in? in, Do I feel that same energy? Okay, I'm trying to describe what the the corpse looks like, and I'm going to really make myself sound like an ignorant man here. Um, Well, just like an ignorant person. You know those stones that you have in the shower... That you would use to like scrub your feet. What are those called? Pumice, pumice stones. Pumice, pumice stone. Yes, the corpse has the consistency of a pumice stone. Cool, cool. Sounds like it would really be I, good for back scratching. Yeah, I take my boot off and I start. No. Um, <laughs> uh, does it have any like an eyeball or like just like I a take it's- just like a pumice stone has holes in it, right? The outer, there, there's bumps and holes in the corpse of the creature. But if you didn't know any better, it's as if the flesh of the creature has melted away. And this, this, this thing that resembles a pumice stone, slightly hollowed, is what could be best described as the skull of the creature. Um... If I do a quick examination, does anything stand out to me as a good trophy? The the flutes were the obvious choice, but they're mm. evil. Um, so I'm wondering if there's like, like, we got pumice stone. I don't want to take the entire thing with us. Although, maybe we load up all three corpses mm. and just plop them in front of the judges. Looking at the corpses... Wilhelm, you're you're smart enough to know that that this thing is a big rock. Like you, you are inte- like Wilhelm is intelligent enough to know that someone who hasn't seen what this creature was that looks at this this rock is going to be like, did you just grab a rock? Like, what are you doing? It's it's very unrecognizable. You could still take it as a trophy, but you can appraise quite quite quickly that it's is it the, underwhelming. The horror of what the creature was when it was alive is nothing compared to what it is now. Um, the 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 way that it, it it has has been destroyed. You could still bring these back as evidence and hope that the testimony of your judges wins you the day in in um when you are um bragging about things it's up to it's up to you though it might be a bit of a gamble to bring these back as corpses uh I mean, flutes are evil but they're still 
show the power of these creatures? Mm, mm-hmm. Veo. And we wouldn't want to leave them here for other people to come find them later. Veo, one of the the things, as you finish your fish, you recall, you still now, as you're as your clarity comes back to your mind, you reflect back on what you saw and experienced when you were playing the clarinet. Hmm. And you, one of the things that you can, comes to the presence of your mind now, now that you are, like, the memory of when you were playing that clarinet versus now that you've snapped out of it, it's like you're remembering someone else's memories. Like, mm. something else was in control of you, and the veil that you normally are was not there while you were possessed in that way. Um, but what gnaws at the back of your mind was that when you played that clarinet, it was like you could see the presence of whatever the thing was that brushed past your leg in the throne room. That there was a creature that was simply lurking on the threshold of this reality that was watching you beckoning for you to play that clarinet to herald its entrance in this world so guys I had this out of body experience I'm sorry Wilhelm for mauling at you Oh, it was, was no problem. I was not. I would never. I've given my life to save you. I would never yeah, attack you. you something should, must have come over, over you. Rudy um, had some barn cats back in the day. I knew what I was doing. <laughs> I mean, I'm probably really much stronger than those barn cats, but still. <laughs> um, I think there's something here. Something going on. We may have closed that portal, but something is lurking and trying to get through. What is the portal? Like, is there a rift or is it a closed rift that was trying to be pried open? What remains now is a very clear sort of... The best way to describe it is... Imagine reality was skin. And you could see in the folds of reality before you, the evidence of a recently healed wound, like a scar. And so it is something that it hurts your vision to even look upon it, yet, and to describe what it looks like to the eyes is to describe something that is more defined by the absence than the presence of something. Imagine for a moment what nothing looks like. It couldn't be darkness, for darkness is itself something. It couldn't be clear like glass, for even the notion of transparency is something and not nothing. It is like when you look, when you scan your vision across just this area of the throne room. It's it's as if your vision is unable to see something, and so the only thing that your mind can do to understand what you are seeing is try to put something together. And you can feel the headache of your mind trying to do this when you look at that spot. Uh, Pluto, stop. Why are you staring at it? No, oh, no. <laughs> uh, I, guys, I, I think it's the flutes are bust. I don't think we can get a trophy from these creatures unless it's the flutes. Um, I'll handle them. Unless... No flute holds power over Pluto Jackson. And I mean flute as in clarinet. It's a clarinet. Sorry. I never took music class. 
woodwind instrument. I'm actually now checking no, my proficiencies no to make sure that's true. Woodwind yeah. instrument has ever held sway over Pluto Jackson. I was in chess club, not uh, music. Um, if if you think you can club. handle them, uh, if they have some kind of power over Veo that is stronger than food, well, it's not because that's how you prepare it a bit. Um, yeah, that'd be that, that's going to help. Um, I, I think if anything, we just give it to one of the judges and see what happens. Ah. Uh. Just let them hold it and, and be like, that is the power we overcame. Um, Monty, you said that I would have advantage on my other wisdom saving throws to pick up the other two flutes. Mm-hmm. Pluto, do you want to try to collect one or do you want me to do it? If you if uh, you you deal with that, I'm going to... I'm not going to t- touch the throne or the crown, but I'm going to wait patiently for Wilhelm to finish collecting the uh, clarinets before I uh, approach with him. I'm hoping to gesture him to me so that he can. Okay. We can do yeah. it together. Could my mage hand help? Pick up one of the clarinets. Sure, you can certainly try doing that. <laughs> Listen, let me let me try a little bit of magic, and you can just snap me out of it. Okay, Wilhelm, I will attempt not to scratch your face off again. Are you still a little no. hungry? Like, always. Okay, I still Not have more rations. Not even a little, actually, I'm very hungry, so I'll Good. take those rations regardless of what happens, but let's try I'll this. I'll keep them. Um, so I'm going to try to pick up one, and I'll let Vale go for the third. Okay, the two of you can both make wisdom saving throws with advantage as you pick up these flutes. The clarinets! Ah, I did it too! <laughs> clarinets. Fifteen. Fifteen? Uh, I'm going to use a luck point. I'm going to heal. While I'm going to use this. a second luck point. 16. Okay. You both succeed. <sighs> as you pick up the clarinets, and as the two of you hold them in your hands, there is a moment where <clears throat> both of you feel the urge to play in unison a song of madness, an homage to the presence that is before you, simply hovering along the borders between this world and another. It hungers to be let in, but it wishes to be ushered in with the respect that it is due. As you resist it, You see only in the corner of your eye, beholding the monstrous form with writhing limbs as thick as tree trunks of the creature. It is... Well, Veo, the best thing that you can recall of it is that it is the amalgamation, just the bloodied stump for what you destroyed here was but an appendage of something far more insidious, a thing that spreads like cancer between worlds. Did you, did you see that? I did, and this is not the first time I've seen it. What? You've seen that before? It's, it's what we have seen. It's what was here, but just a, a small fraction of the monstrosity that took over this castle, took over this very room. I don't think what we did here is over. No. No, I don't think it is. And I don't think the ceiling of the rift in the dreamland is going to be enough to hold back whatever that thing was. So you felt its presence, Veo? And now you've... You think you've seen it? You've glimpsed it? 
seen it, not on this plane per se, but somewhere pushing through. And we know that there's this, you know, and I point to the rift. It, it came through that spot. It's still not healed. It's not where it needs to be to stop this thing from fully coming through and taking over. Uh, it didn't look like, like, is this, is, is what I saw in Wilhelm's mind enough to be like, like, mm. is it like a Lovecraftian vision of unfathomable horror or is it like a, ooh, a trophy? Um, That's the d- judgment call for you to make, but the yeah. best approximation that I could give you. Okay. From what you can piece together, Wilhelm, is you were there in Dreamland when Wrath sealed this rift. Mm -hmm. But it might be best to imagine one can close a door, one can repair it, one can lock and bar that door. But that does not mean that the caller will simply walk away. If they come knocking, the truth of it is, is that the door can, the door can be broken down, but sometimes the best way past the door that has been locked is to simply beg to be let in. I, I kind of mutter to myself. Rule number 29, every locked thing has its key. I think that we should get what we came for and leave the throne room and come back here when we are better suited and with more people to deal with this. I, uh... Are we going to leave the crown? No, no, we'll take the crown, but I think we should leave this rift alone. I don't think the three of us are the ones that are capable of dealing with this. I I think... I think we need Sebastian. I I think whatever's on the other side of that, he... I've seen this guy. He's reached into other worlds. We need Sebastian. He's been able to cross things we've 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 gone places with him as our guide i he might be able to shine a light on it i would also have wrath here and i'm not going to lie i'm feeling i'm feeling some ways about uh the treatment with the amethyst academy and i think river and eldrick uh are two people that we need to make amends with if we are to deal with this i i I think Look, Vale we can't... and I were here, and whatever was trying to get through was horrible. And yeah, it whatever it threatens, it doesn't just threaten this room. It threatens the city. It threatens this world. And part of us wanted to just jump in and deal with it, but we knew we had to do, we had to do on this side. So it's going to be an all, all effort. Well, if we're actually going to properly seal that off. We can start by getting you the crown and taking yeah. the steps forward. And I'm going to go over and press to digitate and clean up the crown a little bit okay. of all the stuff that's on it. Just so we can pick it up without all the goop. All right. And yeah, now that we've collected the three clarinets, I head down and stand next to Pluto Jackson. I guess we're all standing together by the crown yeah. Yeah. of... Westamar. You pick up the crown of Westamar. Um, it is a circlet um, uh, that uh, that has kind of the the almost like a, you can almost imagine it in, in its appearance that you can imagine the the like the claws of two dragons form the points of the crown, but they're made of of um, golden points, right? Um, these crowns in the the crown of Westamar has two siblings, the crown of Caspia and the crown of Illyria. Each of these crowns were fashioned 
at the signing of the Edicts of Lumen as a gift of good faith to from the Amethyst Academy and the Faith of the Sacred Flame. It was a project that the two groups collaborated on to demonstrate to the nobility that they could exist and work together in peace in the service of the nations of the continent uh, to show that the Edicts of Lumen would work. Um, and, and in so doing, these crowns have, bit, have since shaped the destiny of the continent in ways that few could even think about today. For once one is properly attuned to the crown, the, uh, to, the, the power of the crown is nothing short of the monarch's wishes fulfilled. Through history, there have been whispers about the ways that this power has been used for not too many monarchs are in history have made it well known what um, they have used their powers for. Wilhelm, you know it is a point of family pride that when House von Kessel finally seized the throne of Westmar and wore the crown for the first time, your great, 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 several times grandmother, Helena I, made her first wish to end a plague that was afflicting Westmar, thus solidifying her even-handed rule. Yet, since then, some wonder, perhaps the reason why so few know what the wishes have been of the monarchs of the nations is that they have used their wishes to avert such crises that one, that it is better left unsaid what mistakes had happened. Nevertheless, um, it has been some time since the crowns have been used, of course, because the crown of Illyria itself is no longer worn by any one person. It, it requires now the consent of um, the Illyrian cabinet to wield it. The crown of Westamar has been lost here until now. And in Caspia, well, some speculate that there's a reason why the Joplins have so consistently been winning the King's Moot of late. Ooh. Um, I, I hold the crown for a solid minute, just kind of staring at it. I turn, look at Pluto, I look at Veo. Vale. Well. Wilhelm. I think it's uh, take a take a knee. Who am I bowing to? And uh, and I I want to gesture to uh, Veo to take the crown. No, we're not we're not crowning me right now, Pluto. We can do it. Yeah. Let's do no. It. No. Yeah, no. There's just... a, there's Pluto. There's a there's an entire ceremony. We need the seals of dragon. We need the members. What Everybody needs. Will it hurt no. you if we put it on your head, though? Yeah. No, we're not putting it. You know, you know what? And I, I take, I take the crown, <laughs> and I walk over to Elias Drexel, and I hold it out, and I'm like, mm. "Can you keep this for safekeeping until it is time?" Yes, it would be. It may be inappropriate for you to wear it until you can properly attune to it. I, I glare over at Pluto. <laughs> yeah, Dude, I figured. Good. Yeah, I found it, but that doesn't mean it's like Listen, the weight of the crown. It's gonna look way fancier with you with this new helmet. Yeah, I, I get th the weight of the crown is not something that I feel like burdening today. But one day, when I have to. All right, all right, all right. Let's leave this uh, sludgy place. Um, we probably need at least one more trophy. Yeah. We have I mean, a couple flutes. Probably isn't going to be the biggest. Uh, how's uh, How's Casper doing? Um, Casper <laughs> has been uh, um, 
as you enter the room, uh, exit the throne room, in the the antechamber, Casper has been gripping to the floor of the the antechamber, um, at the base of one of the sets of stairs, and is quivering there, and is like, oh, floor, oh, cold, soothing floor, oh, I'm safe here. I'm I'm gonna look down at Casper and I'm gonna be like, you realize this floor is filthy, right? <sighs> and then the carpet leaps up, uh, almost flying into the air to get away from the filth of the floor, only to realize that they are now in the air, and <laughs> doing it, Casper. You're doing it. <laughs> no, 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 you were fine. You weren't even that high. And I whispered to him, Casper, the only place not to get dirty is in the air. <sighs> No. I'll hold really? your hand. I'll hold your hand while you do it. It's okay. Uh, and I pr- and this I is so high. Subtly I press to digitate, but I don't clean. I dirty the floor near her. Oh, it's so disgusting. <laughs> I really don't like it when it's that dirty, but it's so high up in the air. You don't have you're, to go very You're only high. a few feet up. Oh, but it's not nighttime, is it? If if I have to choose between the dirty ground and the night sky, I don't know what I would do. Well, if you stick with me, you'll always have light, and I press to digitate a oh. torch. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, hold on. Uh, I actually don't know if press to digitation can create... Uh, Does you instantaneously light or snuff out a candle, a torch, or a small campfire? I make a small campfire! Do you have a small campfire? question let's see what's in my inventory well while she's doing this i'm just gonna pull out a a lantern and i'm gonna light it i have a torch oh safe in the light yes always stick with me casper and you'll do wonderful things just can't go just gotta stay in the stay in the light and so casper is now fluttering about two feet off the ground avoiding the dirty floor but every time Casper floats any higher than about two feet, you can, you can hear him shudder and go, oh, that's t- getting vertigo. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> We're doing it, guys. We're doing it. If we need one more trophy, I hate to bring this up again, but if Casper, Casper can is have is not a- <laughs> an option for a trophy. No, if he's hovering, Casper... Have you ever noticed how soft Veo's feet look? What's up? They're clean. Soft and clean. She cleans herself. In front of us. Do you, do you, do you clean yourself? <laughs> no, but I can, I guess. And I press the digitate <laughs> yeah, the bottom yeah. of my feet. <laughs> okay. Begrudgingly. Make a deception check to Casper. <laughs> Me? Me? Uh, both of you, together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, 25. Oh, wow. 18. Oh, I've heard that. Wait, but you're not going to shed. It's really hard to get cat hair out of a carpet. Mm. Well, luckily, I don't ever oh. shed. It, oh. The fur only stays on my body. Good, good. Yeah. Well, then I've heard that cats are quite fastidious. You should be pretty clean. Just don't. Don't get any fur stuck in in me. I won't. I will not at all. <laughs> and I hop on him. <laughs> good. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can deal with this. Oh, it's nice to feel feet walking on my back. It's like a massage. Do you like warm or cold? You're saying something about the cold ground. Um. It's nice. He as as long as it's not I, either's fine. A war, being by a warm fire, that's best. I use press to digitate, and I warm the top of the carpet. Oh, thank you. Oh, there. I just would always like. I always imagine just being a nice living room carpet. Behind a, a warm fire, beside a warm fire, keeping com- company with a nice couple of, of old wingback chairs, 
They would tell me stories every day. Oh, wingback chairs are such nice furniture. Oh, and maybe there would be a nice ottoman that could be my friend. And, and some side tables would come over, and I would chat with a nice tea set that would come to visit. Oh, one can dream. Casper, has anybody ever told you that you are the bravest carpet I have ever met? Have, have you met many carpets that can talk? Oh, yeah, Dad, that last part in, didn't you? Um, Casper... There, there's... Are there other carpets that can talk? Casper, in my day, I have walked on so many carpets, and none of them have put in the effort to fly that you have today. That is the truth. Wow. But it would be really nice to meet another carpet. Maybe they could teach me how to fly. Most of the other carpets that I, that I run into, they don't talk. They're not very talkative. I would really like to know other furniture that could talk to me. That would be really nice. Maybe we, we'll, could, we, could, we could have a, 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 whole, a whole living room. And maybe some bookshelves. And the bookshelves could fly down and read themselves to me. Oh, you know, that would be lovely. I might have a friend that might know some bookshelves with flying books. Uh, and also, um, I know it's not a piece of furniture, but uh, Pluto has a talking sword. Mm -hmm. Would you like to talk to my sword? The, the, the carpet says, uh, hello? <laughs> Ign Ignatius says, says, This, this feeble carpet looks very flammable. Ignatius, this carpet has lost its way. Only you can bring it back to the light. I will show you the light. <gasps> By the flame. Oh, a warm fire. Oh. Don't I get too close, though. <laughs> Your fringe is flammable. The sacred flame will light the way. Oh, I could find new faith in this. And Ignatius is like, yes, the sacred flame will light no. the way to truth. <laughs> it will show you how to be brave, to take yes. up a righteous cause. And, and Casper says, oh, the sacred flame sounds wonderful. Oh, 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 by the gods. Converted. Fully converted. <laughs> wow, he converted fast. Uh... Okay, that's enough of that. You know who else you have, Pluto, Casper? Put Ignatius away. No, yeah, that's Ignatius enough. Ignatius so speaks the truth. No. He will guide Casper. No. <laughs> no. Casper, you also have us. We're your new friends. We might not be furniture, but we love you. Oh, thanks. You're, I've been you're not going to like it, abandon me at some yard sale after ten years, are you? And try to like sell me for just a couple gold pieces. No, no, Casper, no, no. who would get rid of a talking carpet? Plus, there's one thing that you're not afraid of, and that's battle and victory. <laughs> I'm not? You're not. You're not even. Huh. Not even a little bit. No, I'm not. I'm afraid of heights, and I'm afraid of dirty things, and I'm afraid of the dark. But, yeah, I, I, can, do a, I can do a battle. I can do a battle. I could do victory. That would be fun. How many of us could you hold? Oh. I, I, I sure. Okay, I'm gonna try to step on to the. To oh, Casper. oh, oh. I clean. <laughs> I'm clean up your armor <laughs> first. I'm like, we're keeping it clean on this carpet. All right, thank you. Sorry, sorry. Oh, you're really heavy. The carpet says. <laughs> I, I, I think I, I I think I think I could I I I think I I I think it'd be okay. I think I, I think I'm not gonna fall. Not gonna fall. Not gonna fall under the dirty floor. Not gonna fall fall under the dirty floor. Yeah, I could do this. I could I, I could do I could do this. Just just this though. It's, it's I go little... to step on. No. Uh, <laughs> oh oh uh okay. I have to clean you first. <laughs> Is it too much, Casper? Are you? Mm. Is this your? Well, from uh, Casper can. Um, okay, let me put it this way. If you are in a combat type situation, Casper is only large enough to bear one rider. Mm. But with 
but in in a not sort of combat situation where where you can sit down or grab the edges of the carpet the the it's a four foot by four foot carpet so like in a combat situation with oh, standing only one person but okay. seated people who are grabbing the edges of the carpet casper could probably fit the whole group my like, friends like three not five not yeah. not the judges yeah uh, my friends there is the um my aunt situation that i still think if we need something that's the best thing we found in this castle and i really would if i'm being honest i would feel more comfortable leaving with that concluded rather than leave her here for who knows when we'll come back I, but I'm wondering, I have the means to enter that room. One of the other two of you has Casper. Do either of the two of you have any other ideas? The only other thing I can think of is I could probably stay around the edges there's edges in that room right on the on like the main um sort of like i could shoot really far yeah there's pillars in the way if she's having by the pillar i can't really do much help bring her out i'm uh i'm not very fly mm. and um pretty loud and it's by choice and I I don't know if I the, as long as I can stay off that delirium sludge I, I might have a shot, but if if we're gonna bring bring her in like are you ready to are you ready to do what it takes because she might be lost and it might oh I'm us to do I'm not assuming we're saving my aunt I okay. am. You have to understand that this isn't a yay, I've been waiting years to kill my aunt situation, okay? I I want to be very clear on that. Yeah, you um, should be. This is more a, I've seen delirium transform people into horrible monsters more time than I can count, and the horror of seeing the semblance of a person trapped inside of what delirium turns them into is more upsetting than than the idea of my aunt being dead. My aunt being unredeemably transformed into a horrible monster, wandering the castle for eternity is something that will keep me up at night. My aunt's torture and torment is something that I, if we leave this castle, I'm going to be thinking about that. I I don't I don't know how to deal with that. I don't know how to deal with the idea that my aunt I didn't know she was alive. And now she's not alive. She's trapped Elias, in an undeath. Elias says we tried so hard. When it w it was Veo and Paluto and Sebastian that found her in her grotto in Queen's Park and brought her back to me well it was a little bit of a convoluted mess as they tried to keep her hidden from me but once i found out that they had her and we tried our best and elias drexel trails off even ophelia reed took a look and ophelia says and i told you then i said there was no other mercy that we could give her but the mercy of death. I tried to tell you so many times, Commander Drexel. I tried to tell all of you that it was a torture. It was cruel to let her suffer in this way. And I, I, I want to promise you that if there was something that I thought that we could do to actually reverse this, to turn this around... But all that we, you were coming up with was dark magic and wishful thinking. And lacking any of that, I don't know what you're going to do. And Elias says, 
the the only alternative would be to Wilhelm if is perhaps one day if you had the power of the crown you could wish her restored That changes things. Is that your only wish, though, that you get? How many wishes does the crown hold? <sighs> the crown... From what I understand... This is just what I can piece together. The people are pretty secretive about it. The power of the crown... Generates over time. So... It's usually about once every 10 years that you can use its power. But if it hasn't been used in decades, the crown could very well have two, maybe even three wishes in it. I made a promise. I don't know if this requires a wish yet, but I did make a promise to Veo Senya that I'd bring her father back. If that requires a wish, I've already made that promise, and I am a man of my word. But, think about it. If we wish for something like, I don't know, all the damage of delirium goes away, that's like a blanket statement that maybe they can, you know, cover a lot of things. <sighs> Ophelia Reed says, you should be careful with that. It's normal that when a new monarch is crowned, there is supposed to be a meeting with the Divine Matriarch of the Academy Directorate and the Monarch where there is a war where they will tell you of some of the things to be careful of. It was with with this, it's not it might not be as simple as that, but it would be better than what some of the them Caspians have done with it. Half the time, Caspians just, uh, is, is, people think that Caspian knights go off and get themselves killed only to have the High King wish them back to life. Rumors. Rumors and slander. No, I've read the history books. Okay, look. It, maybe we, you know, let's, let's not... Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Like this, this power that this crown has first has to be bestowed upon you. Like I wanted it at the crowning ceremony, but you're right. You know, hmm. we, we we don't get anything done unless we go through the motions, and we don't even get to get to those motions right now unless we win this duel. Indeed. And the only way we win this duel is by capturing a big prize. And if you think Lenore is our best bet, that might be the play. We we bring in Lenore. And if we can secure this, then we can think about reversing some of the terrible effects. And we can give her a proper send-off, a proper funeral. Ophelia, Elias, before I make this decision, I just want to ask one thing for sure. In all of your time working Elias to save this city and Ophelia to destroy Delirium, I'm sure you two have both come into your fair share of people you care about being horribly transformed and falling into the effects of delirium. Have you heard anything? Have you seen anything that makes you think that reversing a state like that is possible? Philia Reed thinks for a moment and Elias Drexel says I've heard rumors about some deranged mage living in one of the estates south of the castle he's been we've given him a wide berth for a while I think the academy's gone after him a few times and they've and he's fought them off from what I can understand or at least they haven't been able to they there's a rhyme about him. They call him the Pale Man. But people have said that he 
can help. Make of that what you will. The Malfeasan wizards that have dwelt in the ruins have had a bad track record. Of course, Oscar Yorin said that, that he could do the same, but he failed. And Ophelia Reed says, Don't go looking after such dark magics. There's always a price to be paid for those kind of things. We did experience that with Oscar Yorin. He ended up trying to destroy us. Uh... Veo Pluto, so Oscar Yorn, no go. Do you think the Pale Man would probably do the same? I mean, I can't say I've never had dealings with him before, but at this point, maybe it's just best to get it over with. Yes, I suppose the longer I ask questions and try to come up with excuses not to, uh, the harder it's going to be. Um... <sighs> Yes, I I think she's suffered long enough. She's been in this city for, what, 15 years? The assumption would be that she, what, started to lose her mind and transform shortly after the meteor hit, I would imagine. That's... You two got to talk to her while she was somewhat sentient. Was she happy? Was she, was she okay? She wasn't herself. Not the way I remember her. Even when she was coming back, she, all she wanted was more delirium. All she wanted was to become more of that monster. It's taken her, Wilhelm. Her condition worsened by the day, and there was... We we had... We did have some help, but... It it, it barely prevented the the onset. And I don't know what she is now, but I don't know if there's beyond what that crown can do there's nothing else very well I'm the one who brought it up and so yeah you wish let's to head downstairs let's put an end to this listen I think Pluto you should take the flying carpet I can at least stay at the front and climb pillars if I need to and Wilhelm can walk on pillars I draw Ignatius and I look to Casper and I say will you follow Ignatius's light into battle yeah but just don't make me fly too high okay we will stay low to the ground Oh, we okay. Clear, but we will hopefully not like just stay above the the dirtiness. You know what? Uh, yeah, I don't want to get in the muck. No. I don't. Yeah, no. No, no, no. But you listen to Ignatius, and you listen good. He mm. has shown many the way, and he will show us the way to glory. Ignatius says, are you but a mere doormat or a glorious tapestry to glorify the sacred flame? Onward, soar high in the sky towards the light of the sacred flame and be renewed in glory and justice. Fly away from the filth and evil below you and towards the great power and faith in the sacred flame. Yeah, and, and Casper says, for, yeah, for the flame. <laughs> Pluto's just like Pluto's just standing with a talking sword on a talking carpet, as hovering like a foot and a half off hovering. the ground. <laughs> and I start heading down towards the just like, I lead. Oh, um, <laughs> just <floating> slowly <laughs> towards the basement. Arm outstretched with a Go giant away. bristling, a giant crown. In, 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 with tons oh yeah, you have gems. your new helmet, yeah. right? Your, your gem crusted. Yeah. Oh man, Don't you are a sight. Fanciness. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just glowing sword, flying carpet, <laughs> billowing cape, gem encrusted crown. At yeah, going like five miles per yeah. hour down the hallway. 
I, I, it, it, I'm it, just it, speed walking by you like hurry yeah. up. In this moment, Pluto is peak Caspian style. Oh yeah, this is <laughs> this the is... most like you win the king's mood if you walk into a room like this, man. Like... Um, two things I want to do before we go down, though. Um, can I bellow out my Lord Commanders? I thought you did that already today. No, um, uh, Wilhelm did Wilhelm his Wilhelm inspired speech. us. Okay. Okay. How many HP? Because I haven't even lost my HP yet. It'll replace no. it, I think. How, how much are you giving? Right. 20, but then you get advantage as long as you have it. Okay, yeah, that's better than mine. Mine was only 15. Yeah, because I used it for, like, the last battle, but I haven't used it since we had our rest. Um, so your badge out does any... my speech. Does anyone have any other... I only uh, have one left of it, and I think Pluto healing? lost his, so... Yes, I do. What do you need? I need, like, 20. I need a greater, if you if you can spare it. Um, I have ointment. Could we have That's taken a short rest during that whole thing? Yeah, sure. I'll allow yeah. that. Okay. Well, that changes friggin' everything. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was thinking is I have a potion of invulnerability, so... Wilhelm, I think you you should take this. Oh, I also have a potion of invulnerability. Then Pluto, I think you should take this. <laughs> and I will pour it on the carpet. Give no! me uh, <laughs> ultimate. Um, because it uh, gives you resistance to all damage for a minute. I will take your potion into the heart and the the bowels of this castle. And I will take down Lenore and end her suffering. Hey, hey, can we call her like basement monster or something? <laughs> you, you don't want to name it? Like name her. I I know I know I know. Actually, no. Can we I... will honor her. We will honor her name hmm. as we mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. slay her and lay her tortured soul to rest. She does not deserve this. The royalty of Drakenheim. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if you are going to pursue this, as you head down towards the bowel, through the bowels of Castle Draken to the ancient Von Kessel crypt beneath the throne room, the great pillared hall filled with delirium sludge where each pillar bears the remains and ashes of the great kings that have reigned over Westmar, from House Von Draken to House Von Kessel. All are interred here. This is also where the foundation pillar of Drakenheim holds the imprisoned form of Veo's father himself as well. As you head down the stairs past the vaults I will have you all roll for initiative, and then we will uh, put that in the order to decide how you're going to approach. So I'll put you in initiative order so that we can go turn by turn, but obviously I'm going to give you a prep round because you know what to, what's coming. I'm going to also use the shield of St. Vitruvio. Okay. Uh, I got a 24. Wilhelm has a 24. I got a 12. Okay. I, uh, and I, I got an 8. Okay. I got a third. I got a third of your initiative, Wilhelm. You know, I do feel like I, it's appropriate <laughs> for me to go in first. Um, Kill it. Okay. I, may, I might not go in guns blazing. I think Wilhelm... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All right, so this is what we're looking at here. So then I'll just pull this over just a little bit. You can see there. Okay. So yeah, there's the entrance uh, over on that side, and then this is the whole the whole room, right? So again, it's pretty much filled with delirium sludge, aside from a few small bits. <laughs> uh, Would you say like these pieces on the edges, like um, here and then around this pillar? Are yep. pretty yep. free. Yep. yep. In this corner. Yep. Okay. You can wall run, right, Veo? 
I I'm sure climb. she could. I can that, you just, you just... Mm-hmm. As you descend into the crypts below, taking the stair tower back down, past the gargoyles, past the hall of heroes, past the vault, you can hear Lenora's soft singing or humming as she wanders through the pillars around those of all uh, the between those of the rulers who came before the the room emanates illuminated only by the glowing delirium sludge it is otherwise uh which which fills the room with dim light What will you do? How will you approach this? uh, Are we in initiative order? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Um, Combat has not begun, but we're going to go in initiative order. So Wilhelm, we'll have you start. Wilhelm, I suggest um, flank right or left. Um, We approach from different sides and we uh, uh, stay away, but stay close. Uh, We've fought her before and... uh, or we've dealt with her before, and some of her, um, some of her effects uh, tend to be uh, when we are together. Very well. Um, I I'm going to move up and start walking on the wall. Okay. Uh, um, and as I'm walking on the wall, I'm going to call out. I'm gonna. I'm going to drink my potion of invulnerability. Okay. And, I, and I'm going to call out and say, Aunt Lenore, are, are you well? Roll a d6. One. There is a screech, and she says, Insolent boy, where's your father? I'll teach you to disturb me while I'm paying honor to your and your grandparents. Ah! <laughs> oh no! And oh, now that... we are in initiative order. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will say, Wilhelm, you've used your you've used half your movement to get to this point. What would you like to do? Do I like as I'm walking and I do I see her down that aisle and that's yeah. when I yell out like and as she screams uh it is very obvious in that moment that that is not my aunt Lenore to me like mm-hmm. that that's not the response like she was a very warm and kind person uh so I quickly, She was not. She was she was She not. was not nice to to family members? N- n- no. 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 Lenore. Oh. No. Lenore Lenore might have been one of the most self-centered people that you have ever known. So, so, so did Wilhelm just like? Okay, so this this actually changes everything. Did yeah. Wilhelm never like her? Um, did they never get along? Like Wilhelm knows about like Wilhelm knows the following about Lenore in life. Lenore hated her husband. She was a narcissist who loved who. Like you know, like your your father was like that woman is a narcissist, and the only care that she has for her children is the fact that they came out of her own body. Um, and she, the only thing she cared like she cared about was the appearances of royalty. She was not in life. She was not a warm person. Um, the only people that she was nice to were people that she regarded as servants. <laughs> Oddly enough. Like she treated her servants well, um, but she, Science. but to her family and especially like relatives of her husband, she was extraordinarily cold and most of the time cruel. Yeah. Then rewind and Wilhelm, she screams and Wilhelm goes, yeah, that's about right. And I dart another 15 yeah. feet to try to block sight yeah. from her. But I've, I've had, I've taken my potion of invulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like like in in her life, Lenore was kinder to Veo <laughs> than she would have been to probably her own children. <laughs> oh, yeah. classic, yeah, classic. But but that's also something like 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 Veo. 
you probably would not have known that yourself in, in your own time because Wilhelm as a direct member of the royal family would have had more knowledge about that kind of like the, a royal family puts on appearances right and mm-hmm. so this this is the type of knowledge that like the family members know and the family members know but they they really you know the the insider stuff so so who, who would i remember as like people that she was really nice to um basically anyone who she could order around that couldn't question her <laughs> she would be nice to them okay um but um so like she, she was always polite with your father she was always polite with you but that politeness was always that that's like you know there's people that are really good to wait staff right but then they will turn around and act horrible to the people that they're sitting with at the table. Mm. That's what Lenore was like. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Um, so, Wilhelm, what are you going to do? Um, I finished the rest of my movement and I drank a potion. Okay. Uh, you, I, I would have allowed you to drink the potion before combat. Sir. Oh, Okay, well yeah. then, actually, in that case, then, before I move, as she's screaming, I say, yeah, that's about right, and then I'll take a shot. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, in that case, I think I'm going to use uh, Steady Aim. Okay. Turning a 3 into a 16, which is a tw- 25. All right. The shot rings true. Cla- uh, um, and give me that damage. Oh, you probably didn't have to use the aim because you have the 20 temporary hit points, right? You have advantage anyways. Oh, I do. Okay, well, oh. then I don't use steady aim. No. Um... Thirty-one damage. <laughs> Alrighty. And uh, because I didn't use steady aim, I will shoot again, and I just keep having advantage while I have those temporary hit points. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, uh, I crit. Wow. Yeah. So, Too bad sadly, you already applied the cr- the sneak attack. Yeah. Already applied the sneak attack. Um, crossbow without sneak attack is going to be. It's still good. It's still good. Yeah, attack rolls and saving throws you get advantage on. 15 more damage. Solid. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that's like a, f- what, 40, f- almost 50 damage that turn. Nice. I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. And then then I use the rest of my movement to break line of sight. Okay. Where are you going to move to? To that corner there. All right. Sounds good. Um. Well, um... Lenore will use her lair action, and as she does so, um, you feel the... Lenore is suspended in the air by the tendrils of her hair, which grip around the pillars and reach into the delirium sludge. And as she reverberates um, through the chamber, um, moving through space, the tendrils of her hair shudder and stir into the delirium sludge and um there is suddenly a massive um a a great burst of the sludge shoots straight up forming a wall of octarine fluid um that uh between that stretches between two of the pillars so we've got uh let's just see here let me find a cool spell effect to represent this. Uh, I guess that'll have to do. Oh, I guess we can't really see that. Cl- can you guys see that clearly enough on the map? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a little faded. It's, it, it's it a works. little faded? Okay. Um, maybe... Can you make it a different color? Yeah, maybe i find something else. I mean, I can, I can, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll make that work uh, for 
for now, and then maybe during someone's turn I'll find something else. Um, so um, that's the layer action. And then on Lenore's turn, uh, so it forms a wall of Octor. So as the sludge reaches up, it then shakes down, forming a solid wall of Octorine energy that blocks off from the floor to the, s- the ceiling. Hmm. Yeah. Keep moving. Um, and then Lenore is going to, she pulls her mask away revealing her warped features and face. And as she does so, she turns to put you in her her, her contaminating gaze, Wilhelm. Mm. Um, and then what she will do with her turn is you feel this energy building inside her and a wave of contaminated energy begins boiling up and the um and it unleashes from her um and begins whirling and swirling in this area here okay the energy is building up anyone who ends their turn in that area will take 10d6 damage Get out! Uh, she's leveled up. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's big Lenore. Uh, and <laughs> with uh, with with that, uh, we uh, that is her turn. Uh, Veo, it is your turn. Ah, okay. Um. <laughs> I am gonna move up here, and I don't have any line of sight to her at all. Eh? Uh, from there, no, you'd need to move more into the room to get line of sight to her. Uh, no, about here. Is that a line? <laughs> I would give her plus five to her AC for that shot. I'd allow you to make the shot, but I'm going to give her plus five to her AC. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll move it. I'll use my feline agility just to get back and forth. So I really can't do anything else right now. Um, so I'll take the, take okay. the shots from there. Alrighty. Let's try it. Um, ooh, uh, 27 to hit. Uh, that is a hit with the bonus, even with the bonus to her AC. Nice. <sighs> Thank nice. goodness for her damage. Nice. Um. Oh, Sharpshooter ignores cover, by the way. Oh. Okay. A cover or just partial cover? I'm pretty sure Sharpshooter uh, just ignores. You just get like, you just get to rain hell on. We, oh, I always forget that. I, I, I ignore half forget. and three quarters. Yeah, it would be three full. quarters. Full cover is when you have, if you can't attack something that has full cover. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I would be, if, f- three quarters cover is plus five AC. So Veil, Veil can line up the impossible shot almost. If yeah, anyone has, can, it's no her. Problem. Yep. <laughs> I want to hear this damage. 38 damage. Okay. And another. <laughs> oh, probably not this one. Um, This is uh, 20 or 14, sorry, 14 to hit. I'm afraid not. And get one more on my first turn. Hiya. Uh, 21 one to hit. That does hit. Okay, yeah, that's my... Ooh! Um... 31 damage. Oof, ouch. Ooh. Okay. Thanks. Lenora is very wounded by that, but, uh, but, you know, we'll see how and this goes. I, and then uh. I run away! Using the rest of my movement, I go back to where I was. <laughs> okay. Agility. And... 
I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna use my uh, bonus action to cunning action hide. Okay. Uh, Lenore will use her legendary action uh, to um, fire her insanity beam uh, from her laser eyes uh, at, at who? At Wilhelm. What? <laughs> Uh, okay. close your other getting eyes, a though. 23 to hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kay. it hits. Wilhelm, you take 22 necrotic damage. Oh. Um, which is double. Can I, I, can I can't half that, can I? Uh, you can. You can uncanny dodge this because it's an attack. So you have okay. your potion of invulnerability. Oh, and my potion of invulnerability. So if I uncanny dodge and my potion of invulnerability, that brings it down to a le- five? Well, unfortunately, because you are in Lenore's con- uh, contaminating gaze, which has been empowered, if you are in her direct line of sight, you are vulnerable to necrotic damage, and um, and you also um, uh, cannot regain hit points. So, you- so we'll just do eleven. We'll just so it's going to be eleven. Cool. Still have temp Ooh. HP. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uncanny dodge really only. Yeah. Or the yeah, the uncanny dodge works. The potion is only countering the vulnerability that she's yeah. causing. Okay. Okay, Paluto, it is your turn. All right. The Casper, with all his speed, can he get sixty feet? Uh, Casper, with all of his speed, can he get 60 feet? Yes. Is he a 60-foot flyer? Uh, he is a 30-foot flyer. Oh. Can he dash? Um, or, I think, I don't think he doesn't can. take his own action. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't take his own action. Yeah. And, um, was I also able to drink my invulnerability yes, potion before yes. the fight? Yep, yep. So I'm going to, we're going to do it. I'm going to 60 feet. I'm going to action surge. Okay. Lenore is currently 30 feet in the air. What? Yes. And he doesn't even want to go over two feet. <laughs> yeah. This is going to require some... some ch- damn. Okay. Really quick pep talk. Casper, you got to get me up to the the <laughs> the, the lady with the Okay. Guys, in this case, since you're trying to force an intelligent magic item to do a thing that it normally doesn't want to do, we can make an opposed charisma check. Deal. Okay. Um, what you got? Uh, I want to use <laughs> um commanding presence. Uh, this is a this is a uh an a. It's not a persuasion check. This is just a raw charisma check. Okay, yeah. I got a. I'm, I'm so lucky. I get a ten. I get a twelve. No. Oh, you have lost God. the contest, and so Casper is g- will fly you forward. He flies straight forward, but uh, into the room. But as soon as you urge him to fly up to Lenore. He stops. So he so Casper is going to stop with you in the room. Whereabouts? Right there. Like halfway? Yeah. <laughs> and he just stops dead. He's like, you told me you weren't gonna make me fly too high. Ah oh, Ignatius. <laughs> Talk to the Um I Okay, what's what's my angle on this? Uh um, you know what? I'm going to. Okay, if he won't dash, can I use my action surge for something else? Yeah. I. I. Dimension door above Lenore. <laughs> okay, you dimension door above Lenore. <laughs> and as I fall down, I'm going to uh, drive Ignatius into her. Okay, go for it. Um, wild. Adore. Uh, Just wild. The one I adore! And I get a 30. It's a hit. hit. 
Yeah. Um, please, pre please resolve all the attacks, then roll the damage. Um, I get a 25. Okay. And I get a 23. These are all hits. Uh, <laughs> um, 40. Almost done. It's all right. Aww. We can wait. Yeah. The D8s were brutal to me, um, but uh, 89 damage. All righty. Lenora is grievously wounded by those attacks. However, you've hit her three times. And now here, so contaminated, she has Eldritch blood and you are in her line of sight. So you are going to take D10 necrotic damage for every attack that you hit her with, Ooh. Um, which it w will be doubled because of her el uh, her contaminating gaze. So you it's also it invulnerable. So I'll take okay. half, so so I'll take half 10 and then double. So you're going to take a total of 10 damage once the conversion applies. And I also, she's going to take 1d6 radiant damage for being near the helm of brilliance as it, okay. as it radiates uh, radiant energy. And then you fall into the delirium sludge. I want to <laughs> grab onto the <laughs> edge. Can I try to grab onto the edge? You have no actions to do that. You used all your attacks and you use your action surge. I can't, can I catch? Can I catch the edge? Um, without any movement remaining and without any actions remaining you're you're just falling straight down so, dude okay as i fall past lenore i want to yell casper save me use your bravery <laughs> okay you fall into the delirium sludge give me a constitution saving throw this is where i shine um uh yeah 27 okay so it's still half damage so you're gonna take um, a grand total then of half of 30. So you're gonna take 10 necrotic damage, but no uh, no contamination. All right. <laughs> well, um, we been... are back up to Wilhelm. Um, I'm going to use my cunning action to dash. We're gonna get to there, and oh, was that a uh, you want me to save you because I'm no. totally stabbing? Yeah, okay. yeah, this is gonna be so cool. The fact that you're just like behind her, like surprise. I yeah, I run and I run around the pillar as she's like focusing all of her energy on Pluto, and I come up behind her and I yell, and I yell, nephew, surprise, and I. <laughs> <laughs> And I stab her. Uh, that's going to be a 26 to hit. Also a hit. Wow. The advantage was so clutch. Love being Lord Commander. <laughs> As I fly by, I go, ah! <laughs> I fall in the water <laughs> the sludge. That's going to be 32 damage. Oof, oof. Ouch. She howls in pain from the uh, unseen attack of the Wilhelm surprise. <laughs> Nephew surprise. Nephew yeah. surprise indeed. Damn these, damn these children. Okay. Well, um, as you do that, uh, Wilhelm, she is going to um, use her tendrils to attack Pluto, oh, Pluto. Uh, who is prone in the delirium sludge. She gets a 22 to hit. Um, and Pluto, you are, uh, you are going to take, um, a total of 20 damage, which is, ha which is halved to 10. Um, and you are grappled by Lenore in the sludge. Okay. Let me um, go. And then, um, then her layer action will activate. Um, and I'm grappled. 
you know what? I'm very sorry to do this, Veo, but uh, this is going to go away. No one got hurt by that. The delirium sludge seals the room. Oh, no. <laughs> uh. But I need Veo's we sharpshooter. Need the, we need the shooting and the arrows. It's up to us, it's old for, buddy. It's up to you. I, Wilhelm, it's up to us, old buddy. You're drowning in sludge. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm underwater. You can see my, you can see the gurgles, like the bubbles. <laughs> Two questions for you. Yeah. Is it semi see through? Nope. It is opaque. Is it? Can I go through it? <laughs> you can try. Okay. <laughs> but more surprise. If you would like to try going through it, we can roll the dice. Okay. <laughs> um, and on her turn, um, her sh um, she cries out with another burst of necrotic energy, turning her gaze towards both of you with another blast. And <sighs> um, which which surrounds out like. Um, well, I guess it can't go off the wall, so it's going to be like that then. Uh, yeah, like that. Um, each of you can make constitution saving throws against the Shadow Crash. Oh. And here comes my final luck point. 25. Wilhelm! I got a 15. Wilhelm, you fail. Ah. Oh. Um, so, Wilhelm, you are going to take um, a total of, um, it's still halved, but you're vulnerable, so it's going to be 36 necrotic damage, and you gain one level of contamination. We took Aquax Spurgo before coming on this mission, yes, right? Yes, we did. Because yeah. I have it written down that we did, so I'm going to use one of those. Okay, so in that case, it reduces the damage to 20, um, and you don't gain the level of contamination. We need that. Okay. But if you end your turn in the Shadow Crash, you get no saving throw. You just immediately take 8d8 necrotic damage, which will be doubled because of Lenore's gaze. So if you don't move out of, out of the area on your turn, you'll take the damage. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, that is uh, it for Lenore's turn. Uh, so we go over to Vale. Okay, I see this wall go up, and it's sol it looks solid, but liquidy. So I'm just going to charge at this wall, and I'm going to, like, dive, like, straight through it okay. with my bow in hand. You like, are going to charge at the octarine wall of, of contaminated energy. Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, I was looking forward to playtesting uh, our other our ninth level contaminated spell. You have just uh -oh. you have just run into, uh oh, you have just run headlong. Because I can't misty step through it. I didn't know. I so, didn't know. So Veo, you have just um charged directly into oh. oct octarine wall. Fun. Yeah. Oh um. Well. I regret. Well, I regret right us making this spell now. Why? <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> um, you know, we'll 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 see what happens uh, to you. Um, uh oh, <laughs> why? Are you so well, luckily, yeah. I have a scroll of resurrection. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Okay, let's uh, let's just see what's gonna happen here. Okay, so you're gonna have to make like seven saving seven seven saving throws, Veo. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So here we go. How, how many Aquax Burgos? Have I used? Yeah, I don't think you've used any. No. Yeah, I know I did. I'm trying to think. Like I did last time. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you've okay. used any. I don't but think on get this ready. one I've used any. But so first I need. Um. Okay. So when you move through the the wall, okay. So first, uh, you need to make a Constitution saving throw. Okay. No, I definitely failed that. Definitely. I rolled oh, a three no. and a one. 
fun times. Okay. So. Okay. It's already not stopping off. I, I'm. All right. I'm. I'm. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm nervous. Can I use that. So, Is this an Aquax Virgo moment? Okay. One of three. So. First, uh -oh. it's going to be 60-12 psychic damage from the first layer of the Octarine wall. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's going to be 50... So... Uh, 30... So that's going to be uh, 40 psychic damage. Okay, that's manageable. Remember your advantage on saving throws while you... I mean, that might be gone. It's gone now! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you, uh, now, uh, Veo, um, I need you to roll another constitution saving throw against the necrotic layer. Oh, no. Ah, <laughs> oh, 20! <laughs> okay, that's a successful save. Uh, so that's half damage, so that's 20 necrotic damage. Okay. Guys, I'm gonna die. Okay. No, no. Guys, no. I'm gonna die! I'm, I'm trying to remember right now if this is like a, you disintegrate or something when you die and I really hope I really hope it isn't okay uh, now against the force layer make another constitution saving throw 16 that's a failed save so that's going to be 40 force damage 16 is a fail 40? yeah oh, okay Veo how you doing on hit points? A 20 this I don't I don't know what's happening right now. Okay. No, Veo, you're going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. I don't okay. Know. Make another saving throw. Con? Uh, uh, yep, another con save. 11. That's a fail, so that's going to be another 40 radiant damage. Death. I'm dead. You're at zero? Yeah. Okay. One more saving throw. Which you're going to take damage either way. Okay. So this is going to be two automatic death saving throws because you're taking mm. damage. Okay. I feel good. Okay. Um, and then. Did uh, she just collapse on the other side? When did she stop yeah. falling through? When did she lose her momentum? Yeah, uh, uh, basically. Because uh, <laughs> she can't keep running, but she's dead. Thank we have a scroll yeah. of direction. I just said uh, we had to use it so early. Um, so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, okay. Um, so then you're going to now... Um, you can't get mind-controlled by it. Uh, so you're... We'll, we'll find out when you do. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's... That's all the damage that it does. Uh, but at the start of each of your turns, you're going to gain one level of contamination, and, and at the end at end of each of your turns, uh, you will gain more uh, until you successfully save against it. So, uh, yeah. So, um, uh, on your next turn, uh, you, uh, so... Don't worry, come save me, guys! <laughs> do, you, uh, do you roll death saves at the start or the end of your turn? Is it only one oh failed saving throw because it can't be a crit? Or Whenever that... you start your turn with zero hit points. Yeah, it's when you start your turn with zero hit points. So fortunately for you, you're oh not God. immediately making a death saving throw. But yes, you you fall out on the... Uh, but I failed two, right? So I have Yeah, because one... you, you took damage, so you yeah. automatically fail two death saving throws. But isn't that only like... Is, does that work on spells as well? Whenever you take... Oh, oh, wait, you're correct. So whenever you take damage from a critical hit, so you have one failed death save. Yeah. So it's one failed death save auto automatically. Yeah. I have two more rounds, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Because, yeah, it would have to All be right. a... It would have to be a melee critical hit to be two yeah. automatic death yeah. saves. I'm just, I'm just fishing for a chance here. Uh, how fast can I go? Oh, but... Where is she? Where is her body? Uh, her body is on the other side of the wall, because she did make it through the wall. And uh, Veo, just roll me a d6 to see if you fall into the sludge. No. Yeah, you fall in the sludge. <laughs> uh, so at the start of your turn... Nice! It, yeah. 
So I will be, uh, uh, so yeah, so at the start of your next turn, if you're still in there, that'll be another automatic save. You guys just, here. So, yep. What is that? <laughs> Gatsman, come save me! Yeah, and that That's is where we'll end the night. <laughs> Casper save Veo. Veo disintegrates into sleep. Forget about Pluto. Save Veo. I'm laughing because it's too much to think about. It's too scary. I honestly don't think I'd do anything else. I wouldn't just stand there. No. Uh, In retrospect, I would have rather you stood there. In hindsight, <laughs> if if we all had the true vision, why didn't you use the crown? Green. What? <laughs> Me? Use the crown. I didn't you dive use... through a wall, uh, an octarine you just, you wall. Just use the crown. I thought it was just delirium sludge. I didn't know. <laughs> it's okay. okay. I didn't know yet. We can so... resurrect. Me right. <laughs> I hope so. Well, we'll a big out. thank Unless... you to our incredible <laughs> cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe, for playing tonight. We will <laughs> have to find out the fate of Veo next week in our next episode of The Fate of Drakenheim. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, and just so that you all know, after the our game next week, we will be taking a brief hiatus for three weeks because mm-hmm. I'm going on a vacation. Um so <laughs> so uh please uh uh, do join us next week to find out uh, how this all is going to go down, uh, and hopefully uh, we uh, we will not uh, we'll have it. I'm sure it'll be an exciting night. <laughs> uh, and a huge thank you to Kyle for everything he does behind the scenes. And I guess thank you, Monty. No, um. Thank you. Big thank you to our that Dungeon Master, uh, Monty. Great game tonight. Yeah. Um, leaving on a cliffhanger it's so good. of epic proportions. And uh, just thank you so much for um, for letting us play D&D. Indeed. Indeed. Well, thank you, Monty. Well, um, so... Where 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 does that that leave us? Um, I guess I, I'm I'm like oh my god this is very this is, this is very close uh, this is bad I did not think you were gonna run through that wall. Um, <laughs> um, in 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 our game tonight we use a, a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. They have give, graciously given us permission to use them in our live stream games, and you can use them at your own games too. Uh, Go and check out and support some of these amazing creators. Uh, we use Roll20, uh, where we created a wall of death. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, uh, a lot of the tokens um, produced by uh, from the official token set and uh, the maps by Neutral Party. And uh, some of these, I think, are of your, uh, from the original yes. uh, Dungeons of Drakenheim uh, PDF. So uh, don't forget the Kickstarter. Yeah. Only a few more days left or if you're listening to this as a podcast or on youtube only a few more hours left on the sebastian crow's guide to drakenheim kickstarter so check that out at uh, drakenheim.com or uh, direct through kickstarter um we have come so far in this journey and we are just getting started so thank you all for those of you who have supported it the project so far new classes subclasses and materials that expand the world of drakenheim so check it out of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. We can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dude shirts. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Shadow of Drakenheim. Check it out at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. And we have an amazing Patreon community that makes our show possible. Um, if you enjoy the work that we do here on YouTube and love chatting with us and hanging out with us uh, and want to hang out with us even more uh, through the chats or the comments and get on our patron-only Discord server, you can follow the links in the description below to find out about our Patreon and get onto our patron-only Discord server. Yeah. Um, right, that was my next. Uh, oh. <laughs> Where can they find us on YouTube, Kelly? Yeah. Monty, you took my line. Um, Kelly and I post new... No, um, Monty and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons and Dragons, including advice for Dungeon Masters and guides for players. So you can check us out at youtube.com slash dungeon 
underscore dudes? Indeed. Yes. I always forget if there's an underscore. Uh, um, no, no underscore. No underscore no, for the YouTube. No, underscore YouTube. everywhere else except on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Yep. YouTube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. See, this is what happens when you yeah. give me a line that isn't mine. Yeah. Wow. Um, I know my YouTube channel. Go, it's Dungeon Dudes. Go forward with go your, there. Go forward with your usual line. I stole it. <laughs> uh, be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio only podcast. Again, we will be playing next week. Then we will be off for three weeks while Monty travels the mm. world in search of inspiration for what will happen next in Dragonite. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time when we find out the fate of Vale. Hashtag save Vale. <laughs> Bye. Save Vale. <laughs> Good night.